all my brothers and sisters out there in YouTube land. What's going on, man? What's going on? Hope all y'all, <coughs> excuse me, all y'all having a great, amazing day. Uh, but on today's topic, man, I wanted to touch on something that's uh, been quite the discussion, right? It's been the entree of the evening for quite some time. But uh, for today, uh, it's pertaining to uh, baptizing in Jesus' name only. A lot of y'all know where I'm going with this. <clears throat> Again, it's not a bash video, but more of a correct, correcting, but in a very loving, calm manner. Very meek manner, right? Pertaining to um, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and the rest of those who live within that neighborhood who follow him. Uh, that Jesus name only is the right way to baptize. And if you do follow the Son of the Holy Spirit, you're an error. This is uh, the Catholic faith, right? And also actually how um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit baptism, uh, it actually supports the Trinitarian doctrine or uh, people like the Trinity doc Trinity. They get hives and they start itching everywhere. People just get upset. So the triune Godhead, right? We'll call it triune Godhead, right? So, uh, let's get straight to it, man. I don't I don't want to take too long. My wife is on her way. So uh, she's pregnant. So I got to make sure she's taken care of. Right. So let's get to it, man. In whose name are we to be baptized? In Jesus name, Acts 2 and 38 or in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Matthew 28 and 19. I'm going to read a little bit, break down the context. I also give scriptures after this reading that back up the, um, the Trinitarian doctrine or the internal Godhead. Right. It says here, Jesus, uh, Jesus taught that his disciples were to be baptized, were to baptize others in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, this is in Matthew 28 and 19. <clears throat> Yet in Acts 2 and 38, the apostle <clears throat> Peter taught that those who believed were to be baptized in Jesus' name. The apostles taught, uh, and there is no, and there is salvation, no, uh, no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved, which is in Acts 4 and 12. Now, the question is, which one is true? Acts 2 and 38 or Matthew 28 and 19? Do they contradict each other? Do they come back? What's going on, right? So that's what we're here to find out, right? So a person who is baptized in Jesus' name is someone who has believed in Jesus as Savior, right? This shortened version, uh, the short, this shortened version stated in Acts 2 and 4 <clears throat> did not negate what Jesus taught but rather emphasize salvation exclusively in Jesus, okay? So what uh what Peter taught in Acts 2 and 4, be baptized in Jesus' name for the remissions of sins, this does not combat. This does not go against what Jesus taught in Matthew when he said be baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The problem is with Marcus, and not just Marcus, but many others, his followers and others that teach this, they make, they, they, uh, what Jesus said in Matthew uh, 28, they scratch that, what he said, which is written in red in our Bibles, but then they use Acts to say we must be baptized in Jesus' name. And scripture does not contradict itself. They don't combat each other because if they did, then the Bible would be a contradiction. So we have to be careful when when somebody's and when somebody uh, like Marcus says, hey, it says you have to be baptized in Jesus' name, only in Jesus' name. That's what the Bible says, do, 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 do. But then when you point the scripture out that Jesus said baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is written in red, which is said by Jesus, be careful with those who ignore what Jesus said, who ignore other scriptures when you come with a solid case, okay? <clears throat> the practice of the early church, and it's important to study church history, right? Because you're going to get a better understanding of scripture. The practice of the early church was to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit as Jesus taught. This is part of our early church practice, emphasizing the triune nature of God. So when Jesus said baptizing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the early church demonstrated this. Or they practiced this. Now, Marcus Rogers says, well, it's no, you can, there's nowhere in the Bible that says that they baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, Marcus Rogers, I would like to say that there are many things in the Bible that, that there are many things that happen in Bible history or biblical history that have not been recorded that they have done. So they practice in the early church history, they practice baptizing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But just because it's not written in scripture doesn't mean that they didn't do it. So you can't make your, that's not a case that you can make to say they didn't do it. Just because it's not explicitly written in scripture doesn't mean that they didn't do it. Okay. But with uh, baptizing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's emphasizing the triune nature of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, co-eternal, right? Co-eternality, 
cold in divinity and cold in um dang what is it cold uh cold in uh eternality cold in divinity and cold in um divinity and cold in equality there you go cold in equality right so let me keep reading man because i almost had a brain fart further when the new testament speaks of being baptized in the name of jesus the idea is that of being baptized in the authority of Jesus, in the authority of Jesus. Many passages in the New Testament speak of something done in the name of Jesus as a reference to the authority to Jesus, okay? Um, for example, Acts 3 and 6 shows Peter healing in the name of Jesus, meaning the authority of Jesus. Uh, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. In the name of the authority of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, get up and walk. Okay. <clears throat> the apostle Paul cast out a spirit in the name of Jesus. Again, using the idea of the authority of Jesus. I commend you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. This is in Acts 16 and 18. Okay. Second Thessalonians 3 and 6. Even speaks of avoiding those who claim to follow Jesus, yet live in sin in the name of Jesus. Here, the idea of the authority of Jesus. That's my daughter, y'all. Here, the idea. Here, the idea of the authority of Jesus is also used, emphasizing that Paul, that Paul teachings is from rather ah, emphasizing that Paul's teaching is from Christ rather than his own. I'm sorry, y'all. She distracted me. Being baptized in the name of Jesus clearly included a contrast to other kinds of baptism, as well as baptism by the authority of Jesus. Yet these two concepts do not contradict being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So again, these two scriptures do not um, combat each other. These two scriptures of Matthew and Acts do not contradict each other. They don't bash heads. But what Marcus Rogers is doing, as well as his father's followers, is that they're ta they're taking acts and saying, "Hey, baptize in Jesus' name." It's the only way to baptize in Jesus' name. But when you say baptize only in Jesus' name, which is, has a UPCI background within its own, when you say baptize only in Jesus' name, what you're doing is you're separating uh, Jesus from the Father and the Holy Spirit. When again, co-eternal, co-equal, and co-in divinity which means they've always been here from the beginning, always one, always together, always in one unison, working together, never going their separate ways, right? So you, when you talk about baptism, you talk about salvation, you can't remove them, you can't separate them. They're always together, walking together, and they've been doing it since the beginning of time, okay? So um, you say, yet these two concepts do not contradict each other, contradict being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three persons of the triune God are involved in the salvation of the believer and are recognized in baptism. Why, how so? How are all three, uh, how do all three take part in our salvation? How do all three play a, a part in our salvation? Well, the Bible tells us that you can't come to the Son unless you're, one, you're drawn by the Father, right? Two, once you're drawn by the Father, you come to the Son for salvation, the son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And once you come to Jesus Christ as the Messiah, making him your Lord and Savior, three, the Holy Spirit now lives within you, that born again believer, which uh, regenerates your heart and your mind, taking you on a uh, on a sanctification process to be more like Christ. Drawn by the Father, you come to the Son, you fill with the Holy Spirit, all three. So because all three take a part, they play a part in our salvation as believers, why shouldn't and why wouldn't uh, the triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, why not? Why wouldn't all three be uh, recognized during baptism? Why wouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? They all work together. They've, they've been working together since creation and they take part in our salvation. Okay? So baptism in Jesus' name, Look, if I would say people choose to do that, whatever. OK, my issue is you don't tell people that it's only in Jesus name when Jesus said Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Again, 
Jesus is emphasizing the Trinity. He's emphasizing the triune God. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, like I said, I would before my wife gets home. Not only, not only uh, did I uh, talk about, you know, the baptism, Jesus only, or Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now we're going to go to some a uh, few verses that actually supports the triune nature of God. Because when you understand the triune nature of God, everything else will begin to make sense. You feel me? But when you miss the triune God, and it's not, it's to say that it's one thing, that's, like I said before, to not understand it and you're still learning, but to completely reject it. Now we got a problem because I, that's the central core doctrine of the faith. Okay. But when you have a understanding and a clear concept of the triune God, then you understand God's divinity. You understand who he is. You understand the gospel. You understand salvation. You understand sanctification. You understand all these things because... You understand the nature of God. The moment you get the nature of God wrong, it's it's another Christ that you're preaching. If it's another Christ that you're preaching, then more time than likely, it's another gospel that you're preaching. And if you preach another gospel, the Bible says, let that man be a curse. And if you preach another gospel, then guess what you're going to get? False converts. You see how this goes? This is why people have to understand that doctrine is very much so important because what you believe, and if it's false, like if it's false, what you believe, it will eventually creep over to the core centers of the faith. It will bleed over, like Montana Vikings said. Eventually, what you believe, according to doctrine and theology, it will bleed over to other beliefs that will creep over to the central cores of, of a Christian of what we should believe. Because if 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 you believe something about this that's that line that doesn't line up with the core centrals of the gospel, the core centers of our faith, what we stand on, that's a false gospel. That's a false Jesus. Now you're in complete damnable heresy. Now you're teaching, uh, you're, you're teaching something that's that's very dangerous. You get what I'm saying? So doctrine, all this, it's very important. Theology is important, but understanding the nature of God, the triune God, it's important because the triune God is interwoven. The doctrine of the triune God is interwoven with the gospel. Okay. Uh, let me keep going. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now let's go to Genesis, right? Is the Trinity? It does. Uh, does uh, Genesis support the Trinity, the Triune God? Right, y'all. Forgive me for that. My daughter's just making noise with stuff. Okay, so in the beginning, uh, God, boom, create the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths, and the Spirit, boom, of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, boom, let there be light. And there was light. Three, beginning was God. Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, he spoke, boom, the word went into action. The word, as we know, Christ the Messiah, the uh, the, uh, the word of God incarnate, incarnate, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. It also says, and, and, uh, and, he, and the word became flesh and we be and we beheld his glory. Speaking of Christ. Right. Even James, Jesus, uh, his earthly brother. Right. He called him my Lord and my God. Right. So we have in Genesis, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Again, all three co-eternal, co-divine, co-inequality working together in the beginning of creation working together in our salvation, all right? Let's talk about Jesus being uh, baptized. What is, does uh, Jesus being baptized support the Trinity or uh, the triune God, all right? So um, let's go straight to, what is this, verse 13? This is verse 13 of Matthew 3 of Jesus' baptism. Then, excuse me, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River. He came to John wanting to baptize him, but John tried to stop him. John said, why do you come to me to be baptized? I should be baptized by you. Jesus answered, let it be this way for now. We should do whatever God says is right. Then John agreed. All right, so listen. So Jesus was baptized. Jesus was there, baptized, the son. As soon as he came up out the water, the sky opened up and he saw God's spirit boom coming down on him like a dove right and a voice from heaven said this is my son boom the one i loved i am very pleased with him the son being baptized the holy spirit ascending like a dove 
and the father sky opened up and the father this is my well beloved son who i am pleased again all three present at the baptism of christ the messiah let's keep it moving and then the last one before we shut it down john 14 and 23 all right jesus uh answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we jesus say he jesus didn't say just say i y'all he just didn't say i jesus said and we will come unto him and make our our not make my jesus said we will make our abode with him jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode our home in him so jesus jesus just didn't say i he didn't say i jesus said we we my father and i will make our abode in him if he abides in us so not only does jesus and the father abide in that individual but guess who also abides in that person when they're saved the holy spirit three abiding in that individual why because you cannot separate them why because they co-eternally existed together they're not separated because they were never separated they could never be separated because they were always together again in one unison working together we they will abide in that individual, right? So um, <coughs> that's exactly what it means, man. Uh, I think that's about it. That's about it. So we, we abide in God and God abides in us. So that, that's it, man. I don't know what to say again. Uh, for those who receive it, man, receive it. Um, again, uh, this is not here to bash. I'm not mad at anybody. This is just um, loving and correcting the individual, right? All the scriptures I use, it backs up the the triune God. Nobody said, as in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that they're separate. They can never be separate because they never were. Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father, and the Holy Spirit is not Jesus. The Father is not the Holy Spirit, and the Father is not Jesus. I'm like as simple as that. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is the Word of God manifested in the flesh. Then you have the Father Himself who sent the Son, and then you have the Holy Spirit who dwells in all born again believers. Some people have this idea that God works in some type of mode, like sometimes the father is the Holy Spirit. And then sometimes the father is the father is Jesus. So sometimes he switches back and forth. You get what I'm saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. As far as who will we see in heaven? Sorry, y'all. As far as who we will see in heaven, I don't know and I can't say. But even with Marcus asking that question, that's still... It, that still doesn't make a case. I will give it to Marcus that he's very slick and conniving with the questions that he asks because the questions he does ask, you really don't have an answer to. Which, which in this case, as human beings, we don't have the answer to everything. I don't know everything about the Bible. And if an unbeliever or believer asks me a certain question, I'm gonna say like, be honest, I don't know. But just because I don't know and I don't have the answer to that question of who we will see in heaven, it doesn't make your case more legit just because i can't answer it we don't know what we will see in heaven as far as father son and holy spirit but i do believe that the spirit of god of course will be everywhere in heaven but again we don't know what we will see in heaven but what i do know according to scripture what i do know according to the word of god is that christ said baptizing the father son and the holy spirit emphasizing the triune nature of god again the triune God is interwoven with the gospel. And when you understand that the triune God has take all three have taken a part in our salvation, there's no way you can deny it. Why would you? Why would not you baptize in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit when they have 
all played a part in our salvation. Why wouldn't you recognize them? Why wouldn't you want to recognize them as the Holy Spirit living inside of us, as the Father drawing us, and as the Son saving us? Why wouldn't we recognize them? So, something to think about, man. So, man, I love y'all. Again, uh, it's not the bash. I do this in gentleness, man. I do this because I want people to understand truth. And I don't say like, oh, I know truth and I preach, you know, it's not not in a arrogant way, but um, I sit down and I and I want to learn as much about the scriptures each and every day, keeping myself humble because I don't know everything and I'm not going to squeeze every bit of juice out of this Bible. Um, so what I do know, what I have learned, what I've had taken in and absorbed, I want to share with y'all and I'll share with y'all what I have gotten from the Lord, not from His fist, not from His voice, but just from studying the scriptures, man. So, with that being said. I love y'all, man. I really do. And I hope this blesses y'all for those who uh, end up catching later, man. So y'all be easy, man. I love y'all. God bless. Peace.